Yo, what's up? This is Big Boy, aka Daddy Fat Sass, aka Sir Lucius L. Left Foot. The L does stand for lavender because the ladies like to put lip gloss on my lapel. And we right here on Hard Knock TV. You feel me? Yeah. As the world shakes unharmed, worn, calm in the middle of the storm, bomb. Flow tsunami, ring the alarm. Big Boy for dummies, come and get some um, wisdom. Like your back teeth, I get the fuck on like some bad cheese. Negative energy, not tolerated. You all about a dollar, and I'm exonerated. I just did something with Complex where we talked about the top 25 albums. Right. I remember one of the ones you mentioned was uh, The Chronic. The Chronic album definitely stood out for one of the main uh, reasons to me was, was how it was put together. You know, it was a real uh, cinematic uh, for one, for one, and for two, um, Dr. Dre was introducing some of the most lethal MCs back then, Snoop and Corrupt. There was a whole crew of young, fresh cats coming out over Dr. Dre production, man, and, and the skits and everything kind of tied the whole album together. It takes you on an adventure, you know? So that's definitely, definitely fascinating to it. Now, I remember uh, one of the stories you also talked about is uh, the first time you were listening to, uh, I think it was Two Life Crew, yeah. and your mom's yeah. walked in and yeah. heard, you, uh, yeah. heard you talk about that. Yeah. Take us back to, to that day, just do, what was that like, you remember? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it actually was, uh, First one, like when you know the Corona Advisory sticker started coming on records, was uh, the Easy E, Easy Does It album, you know. And my mom came in from work one day, and my, me and my brother was listening to it. And um, yeah, we got a serious ass whooping that day, you know. I'm listening to it, but you know, it's all curiosity for a kid, and we were just like, whatever. So then we found out about two live crew, and they cuss even more, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, I was really into cuss words back then. My grandma cussed like a sailor. She the one who taught me how to curse real good. I, I can cuss like a motherfucker, you feel me? So, uh, two live crew out there, yo ass, bitch. Yo, backstage pass. We like teach our little cousin. He was like maybe four, five then, and then he was standing in front of his mama. And then we got in trouble for that shit too, yeah. You were talking about how you used to get the CDs. You and Andre had yeah. the, the like a Columbia scheme, but yeah. you were like mail yeah. it to the neighbor or something. Yeah. Back in high school, we ordered the eight CDs for one penny. From I guess it was BMG, you know what I'm saying? And anything that was on the list, we ordered and sent it to the neighbor's house. And every time we get out of school, you know, we go and, and see the box sitting on the side of the house and get the <laughs> CDs. So that's how we got a lot of free music. Man, that's a good hustle. They, ca they caught on to that. <laughs> they definitely caught on to that. Mama used to say, take your time. Well, I'm a pit pocket when I design rhymes. Every little step I take like Bob Brown is so profound that when I throw those nouns, we gon' get low, low down until we get back up. Why everything gravy, tater smashed up. You know I keep a full plate and a full thing of hot ones. Throw away that of eight. Let's talk about the album a little bit. Um, what, what was your inspiration for the title? Um, the inspiration actually came from my grandma, you know. Um, this is really about a search for the truth, you know. This lies in dangerous rooms. She, she always said if um, she was on, you know, write a book about her life, she's gonna tell on everybody, you know what I'm saying? She's gonna tell everything, and she's gonna fuck our whole family up. She gonna divulge all the family secrets, but she ain't do what she held back and spared everybody. So, you know, it's you know, it's the, the age of information too, that's it's twofold. Where you have social networking, you know, where things that are not facts can, can be thrown out there and be misconstrued as fact. And on the flip side of that, you know, the world's connected through, you know, the internet or whatever, and it's just, um, anything you want to find out about from world history, politics, to pet room, to exercise, uh, dietary needs, it's right there at the click of a button, you know what I'm saying? So you just get out get out there and, and find it. Are there any uh, vicious lies or rumors that you wanted to spell out there? Uh, not really. They, they really know what's up with me, man. I'm, I'm all about, you know, I'm all about people and good vibrations and good music, you know? For sure. All about positive vibration, negative energy, not tolerated. Um, don't play that. You have a, a track, uh, Tom Petty That Ho. Right, right. right. So tell me where, where, where did that come from? Um, it actually came from, you know, just uh, actually uh, a turn of free falling, you know what I'm saying, from a Tom Petty song. And uh, just, you know, it's a little analogy of uh, when you're free falling, that's when you leave the house and you don't know when you're going to wake up at the next day. You know what I'm saying? So we call that Tom Petty. Like when you going out that night, you get fresh, get your clothes on. Like, oh, it's been Tom Petty that whole night. So you wake up the next day, you don't know where you're gonna be at. So it's like whatever goes for the night, definitely. Uh, now, one of the more personal uh, songs on the album is uh, "She Hates Me." Uh, can you uh, tell us what what inspired you to write that? It's, sto it's a storytelling, you know. I mean, it's just definitely storytelling, and I mean, just certain aspects of your life when you're dealing in relationships. Um, some things happen. It's really a song about hope. Like, you know, a guy who, who had a girl, lost a girl, got the girl back again. Or, um, uh, 
develop some sort of understanding to, to find out where both of you need to be in a relationship to make it work. So it can apply to anybody. The music, you want to keep it honest, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like that's one thing that makes great artists is when you let the listener into your real feelings and your real life. And uh, just like songs like Tremendous Damage, you know, um, people go through the same things you go through, you know what I'm saying? I've been having people just hit me up about even descending, you know what I mean? People have lost loved ones and the song speaks to them in a certain way and it just brings out a certain song in this in you. You know what I mean? I, I use the music uh, as therapy, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, this is what I love to do is make music. This is what I do, you know what I mean? Like, I can sit home all day and just be bored as fuck, you know what I mean? Like, but music makes me tick. I love searching for new sounds and new ideas to make new records. Forgive me if I raise my voice, I won't raise a hand. But one thing I will do, baby, is raise my little man. Don't raise me. Uh, speaking of new sounds, you work with Little Dragon a lot uh, yeah. on this album. Uh, going into it, is, is that did you have like things in mind that you want to accomplish, or was it more like you just went in there with them and just kind of vibed out and, and saw where it went? Or I mean, I like to say the music is organically created, never genetically modified. You know, so a lot of the songs happen by chance. You know, me um, working with different groups and things. I've been on tour with these guys doing festivals and such. You know, and we had mutual friends like my my partner um, uh, Trevor Kane who. I worked with um, all my webisodes and, and just shot the Avila, my eye video with me. Like, he connected me with the little Dragon Plug. I met him at South by Southwest, it was cool. And they wanted to come down to the studio and I invited him to the studio. And then it's like, whatever we record sticks, you know? I mean, uh, the chemistry is off, it's, it's there. So it's a, a full on experimentation process, process of just making the, the songs, you know? And that's how you make some of the best music because you never know what's going to happen. It's not like, okay, I'm going to do the song and I want to do this. I'm going to do this. It's like, no, we just play the music or build the music and everybody just kind of pitches in. And that's how that's how we work a lot of it. You, know? you had a Pimp C verse on the album. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Um, had it for years. Uh, organized Noise. It was on a, um, a record a long time ago uh, that was like unreleased or whatever. And then I had it for my last record. And, you know, UGK is like one of my favorite groups ever, you know. And you know, uh, having Big Crit and Bun and uh, the Essence of Pimp C on the, on the record over the organized North track was just like a little semi dream come true. You know, I, people always be like, you know, Crit remind me of Outkast and UGK. So I'm like, okay, um, it'd be cool to, you know, let's all get in one environment and let's just, you know, just make it happen. And it turned out jam. Definitely did. Uh, do you have a favorite verse on that? Uh, I like that in the A verse. That's like one of the most, you know, one of the most uh, ferocious on there. You know what I mean? Just you know, uh, three Atlanta MCs, top lyricists in the game, just you know, volleying off each other to make a, a dope A town anthem. I love that record. I like you know, feeding off the energies of, of, of other cats that I work with. And um, you know, Ti came in, he set the bar, so it was time to go in and go crazy. We, we had fun doing that record too. Definitely. Shout out to Ti, it's my dog. Definitely sounds and like. For sure. King shit, Buckingham Palace, and I'm bucking on the motherfucking beat. God damn it, I ain't lost a step, but some of y'all niggas plowed to death. This player's ball, I was called the best, and now they only call me daddy fat sacks. I got a Cadillac with the diamond in the back, and the sun roof top. My doctor said I'm lacking the vitamin D, I need the sun, won't stop. Shine brighter, rhyme tighter than anybody in your top ten, my nigga, my nigga, like a postman.